I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man is suck. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in a break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. Eddie! What's up, buddy? Good to see you. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. We have a very, very, very lovely special guest. She's done tons of TV. She's had her own show on TV. She's been on TV probably more than any guest we've ever had. A very, very funny comedian, and also someone who has shared a working class hole reality with yours truly that's right please help me welcome abby crutchfield hey. yay thanks yeah. josh ed, ed josh it's great to be here abby what is your craziest day job my craziest day job is <laughs> any of them i've ever had because i've never i've not been a good fit for them okay. try as i might now now you know a lot of years later i know why but at the time, I thought I was such a people pleaser. I thought I'm being the sweetest, friendliest person. How come everybody can't stand <laughs> what I do here? <laughs> so one that comes to mind, one crazy moment in a day job was I was temping at an office and I had the job of answering the phone. <laughs> uh, like, remember those days? They don't even have that anymore. Ed. Really? What no. Mean, like a secretary? No. I mean, they do for certain offices, but like I'm a secretary. That's like what I that's how I got into corporate. Yeah, is being that. So a lot of my jobs have been Answering the secretary. The Answering the and phone. no, no longer do I have a line attached to me of anybody's. I have. I used to be responsible for like three. Like people's a phone phones. doesn't ring anymore. It doesn't ring. We're all just emailing and smartphoning. Uh, yeah, that's unnecessary. Yeah. With Slack, with all those things that's now. That's great. That's great. I'm though. sure like big time executives have wow. a phone dedicated to them, and someone's on it. I'm sure. But overall, with the technology, there's no reason. Huh. Yeah, that's wow. nice. Yeah. Well, then this wouldn't have happened. This won't happen to today's youth. But <laughs> I would answer the phone and get nervous when I answered, so, even though that was the role, and I would say the name of the company wrong. And um, and it was really a difference between, let's say, the company was called Bob. I would say Bob Resources, and the answer was Bob Services, or the the real oh, name. That's great. Okay. And my temp agency was Resources, so I was like, yeah. oh, man, what's the difference? They yeah. were synonyms to me. Yeah. So I was like Bob Resources. <laughs> And the lady next to me, who was also a secretary, like by the middle of the day, she goes, it's services. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> I thought she, uh, wait, I like, she I let it know. build to a point uh, where she was so upset with Abby. That she, that's what she, she yeah, had I, to was say after something. lunch. Yeah. I just love her like doing like her crossword puzzle, right? <laughs> Waiting for the phone ring and hearing you say resources. Yeah. This, <laughs> she was like, <laughs> Abby got, got her whole life ahead of her. And she's <laughs> all words. beautiful and bright eyed. Nope. And this old lady's like, Get it right. She was no. She was like just a generation above me. She wasn't even that like much of a gap. She was like five years older than me, but she was just like cut it together. And I said, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll get it. I'll get it. And I never got it. And I brought cookies the next day to make up for it. <laughs> and I announced to everyone, I was like, hey guys, there's chocolate chip cookies in the break room if you need them. And nobody by the end of the day, nobody touched my cookies. Why? I was Ed. Oh, you would oh, eat those. In wow. an office, wouldn't you? Oh, oh, Ed, totally Ed, Ed, I would eat anybody's homemade cookies. Yeah. If on the subway, if someone offered me a homemade cookie <laughs> in a Tupperware, I'd be like, sure, why not? Tupperware. Oh, that's the defining. Yeah, if, if it's, it's in a baggie, it. I don't want. So this <laughs> it's any kind of Ziploc. No, but no. it's Tupperware. It's up, upper scale. It seals in the freshness. Now this is a New York job. This is in New York City. Yeah, it was oh. my earliest tent memories, oh, and this gosh, is I was. I had stage fright apparently for them to not eat the cookies they wasn't hated, that they, they hated <laughs> <laughs> I probably was really shy about announcing it anyway I wasn't like cookies in the break room I was just like hey hey did you know there's cookies I made I made cookies today guys and everybody kind of like didn't even look me in the eye but went they would nod and be back to work they had probably been briefed on me ahead of time. Like, don't talk to this temp. Let her go away. He's like, what? what? Is this like a program she's with? Is that why she's here? <laughs> and I, I remember telling my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband, I was like, this is going to make up for that mistake yesterday. And and I came home and I was like, nobody ate I love, my cookies. I love Luke. Luke's a really funny comic like as well. the idea of somebody yeah. going in there going, hey, what's with the cookies? Yeah. Abby made them. Yeah. <laughs> don't, that don't even. even. Temp who can't really know the name of the company she made. <laughs> yes. You think she followed the instructions? I should box? have. Been, I was yeah. If you ever remember, Murphy Brown always had a horribly inept uh, secretary. I was like, I could have fit right in with those <laughs> for that day. Uh, that so was good. my but worst. You always, but you, the place we worked at together, mm -hmm. you can't. You got to be 
fairly on top of it to keep a job there. I was, yeah. yeah. I mean, I had learned that was not my first rodeo. That was a few years in yeah. to temping by that point. And I yeah. became full time. I started by yes. temping and then I became full time there, so, which is great. A little background for the audience. And then I'll let you continue. Sorry mm -hmm. to cut you off. Um, my best friend is a common denominator between Abby and I. So before I ever met Abby as a comedian, I knew this other person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was actually following her career before knowing her through him. Oh, and she That's was so like the pinnacle at the time for me because it was the dream to drop the day job. We were goals, right? Like that was the whole thing was like was get to enough the day job stage time out. and enough TV time yeah. to just generate some kind of income, yeah. right? That was the idea. Yes. Or even, you know what? I had to leave my day job not because of all the money I was making, but because of the time it was taking to try to generate momentum. Yeah. So I was getting enough auditions during the week that it was giving me like anxiety. <laughs> Dude, you had, I couldn't leave every single lunch break. Yeah, I, that's. But it didn't translate into like all these bookings. Isn't that it just wild, though? slowly turned. Like yeah. now, I'm not saying I, I've been able to, like my, no success like hers. I mean, she was like gone, and I was like, wow, I can't believe she did it. <laughs> it was a great. She time. had worked enough, where it was like, oh, she's leaving. My right, buddy. because you uh, she did a, she, a TV show, right? Yeah, at that time I was leaving to do. I guess commercials. Yeah, you had been getting booked and, a ton. Yeah, yeah, it was mainly just to do commercials more often. But then the idea was get on screen for commercials, then get known as a spokesperson, and then uh, get recognized. Uh, and someone goes, "I want that commercial girl for my TV show." Yeah. That's how I thought it was going to go. <laughs> Didn't did, go that way. Did what you get kind a spokesperson? of spokesperson? Um, kind of it thing? kind of did. You, did. you had your own show. I would like, say I had. Yeah. Mom. So the first show I got to host was um, was it? Oh, People Now. It was a celebrity interview show. Okay. And then that was for People Magazine. They had an online live streaming morning show. So that was like, whoo, really good practice for talking to a bunch of people I'd never met before. Um, that I would be impressed by, and also listening in my like in a little ear, oh, all those things. I yeah, can't remember yeah. the terms. <laughs> listening to a person talk to you while they're answering I your had questions. I to do that for one of my That's gigs wild. too. Yeah, that's never and sucked. reading a prompter at the same time. So it was yeah, great for my ADHD, but yeah, I was yeah. just like, <laughs> it's this a is lot. a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I hosted "You Can Do Better" on True TV, which was a really fun like single camera show where you we were in LA and you would shoot in different scenes and we could be different characters sometimes, and that like was a, just a how to do adulting like a scripted that was a scripted. it was scripted yes uh -huh. and it was information infotainment it was like informational <laughs> comedy oh we had a ton my, of fun she just but broke it was, my brain i had no idea that existed yeah information <laughs> information comedy i'll tell you no, what there's nobody hollywood loves putting two things together oh man. yeah Duh, just the oh that oh. barely makes sense <laughs> and then the one i remember that was like the big one was the mom thing, And then right? I finally got to host my own show, which yeah. is called <laughs> Up Early Tonight. It yes, like with, a for moms late night with style newborns. Show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and right. I, had, uh, yeah, right. I had a baby at the time, so it was a it was a great fit. And um, I got to work with a lot of parent com comedians that I know. We did panel, we did um, sketches, and I did like monologues. So that was super fun. I thought that was a really great concept. And then when I finally had my kid, I realized... I don't. I'm so exhausted. <laughs> I don't know why the concept's you great. Like, cause you are up mm -hmm. at the weirdest hours, oh, right. but the last thing you're like, oh god, I'm so fucking. I don't even know what to. I, yeah, you're behind I, on it's shows. Basically, being sleep deprived for four months straight. I know th three days in, I was like, do more people's babies accidentally die and no one talks about it? Like, I honestly thought, I'm going to Because I her fell asleep. asleep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is a good. So one of our community buddies, not going to say your name, you motherfucker, because we're still friends. But we, he pulled me out of bed the day before my kid went to labor at like an 8 a.m. call time. And we shot a sketch for him <laughs> for 12 hours, I want to say. From like 8 a.m., me, uh, a couple other people. I'm thinking, all right, cool. My wife just got this thing done where it can expedite the process because he was a couple days overdue. <laughs> and they're like, it's going to take, it could take up to a week for this to kick in. It definitely won't be but tonight. Mm -hmm. I f her parents come into town because we're prepping for this baby to come. So I'm up with them till 10, 11 p.m., fall asleep. Who, the, who comes knocking on the door at midnight? This kid. <laughs> I didn't sleep. From I haven't slept yet. So you did, you did this I still haven't slept. You did this shoot. Yeah, the for this thing. guy. And then you thought I get to relax now because my because yeah. the the flaming hot Cheetos that my wife ate won't kick in yet. <laughs> exactly. And then I'm like, then they kicked in. And then through the whole this is what I'm thinking. But the whole labor in the moments where I'm not occupied with what's going on, I'm thinking, well, at least it'll be a good real piece. It's like shot really well by a really right. well known director cool. guy. Yeah. And I, it's a great little real piece. I do some funny stuff in it. 
He tells me two weeks later, he doesn't even talk to me. And I'm thinking, hey, man, what's up with that sketch? He lost it <gasps> off the hard drive. Uh, no. oh, so sad. And so I haven't sad. slept since. I, I <laughs> thought I killed this guy. It's three years ago. I'm so, my kid's about to be three. <laughs> Three, age three was when my You're daughter still, started to like wake us up again. I'm still pissed off. Oh, really? catch- yeah, hopefully it'll get recovered somehow. No, I think it's going to happen too. It sucks. <laughs> the sleep deprivation is the worst. I, I lost eight hours sleeping. three years ago. I'm, I, I want them back because that was the last. I didn't know that was the last time. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like, you don't you know this is the last sunset you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he took it from me. <laughs> so good. You can't. So, yeah, you can't know. I'm uh, dying to talk about this with you because I feel like you're the only person I've ever had on that actually. This must be it must it must be like for Ed when people come in that work at Fridays. It's like a kinship. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like a connection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like with, uh, we had Teresa here and she's like all the, all her wait, waitress stories. I was like, oh my god, let's talk. Yeah, yeah. I have a special Fridays <laughs> like, memory I'll share with you later. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, cool. So let me just do my part. Yeah. Because I never get this. <laughs> uh, now I would you'd have to pry my day job out of my cold dead hands. <laughs> I'm not letting it go. Right. I, I'm going to go. You're going to have to have security remove me because I will do whatever it takes to stay. Yeah. It's like not how I felt. When, like when you got to leave, I was envious. I was like, <laughs> man, how can I make this happen? It can be done. <laughs> I was all about it. Fast forward to now. No, thank you. I'd have to have a calendar of two years booked ahead yeah. for me to even think about bouncing. Right, right, right. How priorities change, it's right? Just, it's nuts. Well, to me, it's like, let's make a deal. What were you going to say? The benefits. Like, yeah, the health just security. The, the it's health, health insurance is like so. And flexibility is, it's mm-hmm. kind of going away because all these businesses now are trying to make everyone come back to the office. Oh, really? But for me, the flexibility is flexing. <laughs> it is yeah. a lot more. Yeah, like when huge. we were there together, it was a five day a week in office job. Mm-hmm. If you were, because I don't, book anywhere near as much as Abby does, but I have a really good agency and I used to get sent out before the pandemic probably three, four times a week for That's commercials. Right. Yeah. That's how right. much they're seeing people. Mm-hmm. And you would have to figure out a way to, you got a doctor's appointment doctor's every appointment, day. Uh, lunch you know, line was long. Like you have all these excuses yeah, and you're sweating the whole time. You're just you trying not that. to get caught and get in trouble and, and keep these two worlds alive. And that was kind of the adrenaline rush. Yeah. And it's like, heaven forbid they ask you the question, what's more important to you, this job or your actual hopes and dreams? Yeah. Yeah. And then you'd be like, hopes <laughs> yeah. and dreams. Yeah. Yeah. Now um, I just, now I just, I, I have no problems lying anymore when it comes to business. And, I, and that <laughs> wasn't me yeah, in the beginning. Personal. It was like, I'm standing on this dream. Like, no, no, I'm standing on money. And, and the shorter I get means the less money I'm having. Well, <laughs> here's my thing with, with work now with, with comedy. I say as little as possible. Shut up. I say yeah. as just little as up. possible. You don't need to talk about it. I just, I, well, I don't want you to have any because... I don't know what kind of story I'm gonna have to feed you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Keep the food yeah. in my mouth. I just it's survival I don't know now. what I'm gonna have. How this is gonna, you know? I don't. I don't say anything about anything. Right, you know right. what I mean? Uh, yeah. No, Cheating, it's definitely- no lying. I'm okay with now. I, I don't want to cheat, but I'll fucking lie to you if I feel like you need to be lied to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? They yeah. just want to hear what they want to hear. So yeah. how do you feel? Well, to me, it was like, let's make a deal. Uh, when <laughs> the first door is like your day job that you know what to expect or something tentative, like possible fame and fortune. And I'm like, no, the day job, please. Like even now, yeah. I, I long for stability because I, you know, and 20 years in-ish yeah. to this career yeah. of... Windfalls and droughts. Um, I just can't. Ah, it's not fun. You're you are sweet and honest, mm-hmm. um, and I am not sweet. But mm-hmm. I, th- there's an honesty about me, and mm-hmm. I want to openly talk to you about this because I feel like when I do ask this question to some of our other guests, it's it, it doesn't miss, but they don't relate to it as much. What I'm about to ask you. Okay. Have you seen the truth within the business that we? chosen what i mean is like (laughs) i always talk to ed and everybody about how i am really cognizant of what i like about the job stand-up and it has nothing to do with anything but the part where i'm on stage Mm -hmm. and everything associated with the business part has basically kind of crumbled in my eyes due Mm -hmm. to the era i came in which is a similar area to era to you and what we thought like okay but at the end of the day if i'm good 
these things should come. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it wasn't ideal. Like, because it was you're, what because it was, you're not good you yet. It. You're working so hard to become good. Yeah. You think once I'm finally there, then things will get rolling. I'll have the momentum and I'll have, you know, like the connect connection. Yeah. And yeah, it's not enough to simply be talented. And how do you feel now about like, like when you see the business and because you've been seeing it from like very deep inside where you're like, wow, the next thing could be the thing because mm-hmm. you were doing it. Uh, do you look at it now where you're like, OK, here's what I definitely know is the truth. And here's <laughs> what I wish I knew when I was working. Yeah. Um that I have no control over it and mm-hmm. that that little bit of luck that it takes that, you know, could predict whatever's going to happen to you is not luck that you create. I used to think like, I make my own luck or it's just a matter of showing up. <laughs> you and Billy Zane. It's a numbers game. Yeah. <laughs> Although Billy Zane is finally getting to play Marlon Brando, which I think is funny because he used to be compared to a young Marlon Brando. Now he happens now to look like an, an old, old Marlon, Marlon Brando. Brando. Well, once he lost that hair. I yeah, mean. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, well, once we found out those were wigs. <laughs> just imagine that year, the year he lost his hair thinking I'll never get to play Brando now. <laughs> You know, um, heartthrobs are wearing wigs in the 80s and into oh, the late dude. 90s and no one questioned it. Women still throwing Ted their Danson, underwear at him. Ted Danson, that big ass wig. He's been bald <laughs> since he was 22. Well, whatever he's got now <laughs> made me forget that he had a wig. Because yeah. I'm yeah. like, it looks, looks so great good now. now. It looks great now. Yeah. Or it looks, it looks, it looks real now. Real. Right. Real. Sorry. I don't want to put value judgment on baldness being bad. But um, Thank but, you. Yeah. And this is, a, this is our ad from Abby. It was <laughs> the bald friendly sweet. show. Conscious person on uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Th- that's one real. <laughs> Out, every single part of hair comes off with it. It's just like, how do you do, man? The beard. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Keep Mega going. bald. <laughs> Keep going, Abby. Sorry, we cut you off. For no, no, no. no. <laughs> so I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not the person to talk to because I'm in a. I'm in a place right now that's very cynical and very probably still too bitter um with regard to the career whereas like i'm i'm wondering i what else can i do if i can't rely on entertainment yes. you know what else should i be doing and um 40s is a thing too i don't know i'm not saying you're 40 i'm saying i'm 43 <laughs> and when you're in your 40s that drum is a little louder that like yo you could look around and be 50 with a roommate. Yeah, exactly. Or have uh, health insurance. Or, yeah, you yeah. could be that dude. You have to make those choices. Nevertheless, I have a silver lining to this thing I'm going to say. But, um, <laughs> Why? I mean, I could. <laughs> Who cares about these people? I could work at TJ Maxx because I'm already like organizing their shelves uh, for them for free. But um, community service. <laughs> everybody's like, "Do you work here?" And I'm like, "No." And then they say, "Sorry." I'm like, Wait, I know how to answer. She's just, Come back. She's I, like, I'm no, gonna help you anyway. No, I just believe brooms and dustpans should yeah. be in the same aisle. <laughs> no, I'm the annoying person that wants to help. Uh, like, please think I work here so I can help you. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, so the fact that like um, I don't really have control. Some things I lost control over during the pandemic. One thing you're talking about, like the state of the economy. That's one thing. A writer strike, you don't really have control over, and the jobs that go away. Then and then with the pandemic, even celebrities were complaining about missing out on work. So you knew if the game was going to get started again, they are going to be called on first, yeah. just to drum up interest and watching programs. Yeah. So I just felt like I was getting pushed further and further back in the waiting line. Because I'm not a known entity as successful as, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like I've been or you, I seem to have been to you. I love oh, how you I are. live in your mind. You're a successful person. I mean, I haven't left New York. I always think of it as like I haven't left New York and I haven't compromised on my integrity. But yeah, I have had other jobs in addition to comedy, obviously. And um, and so and now, like just after the pandemic and then writer strike and actor strike and like I had representation, but we weren't in touch anymore. Yeah. So essentially, even though they work for you, I felt like they let me go. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, man, what do I have left? And I have people that know me and I have my <laughs> looks like you're still your skill is there. And I'm like, how do you know? What if it was all a big lie? <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it's not a good finish your thought. I don't want to cut. Yeah. Off. So in conclusion, I, there's a silver lining coming. Well, I want to ruin that. I'm God hoping that. Step on that. I mean, I don't have a. I don't have anything else to do, <laughs> so. <laughs> I so could, that's a super line. I can go. Yeah, I can go back to school and collect more debt. 
<laughs> no, I think um, I just it's, it's allowed me to reflect on my identity. I wasn't like so I a lot of my identity was built around working a ton yes. and being recognizable to my peers of like, oh, you're always, you know, this or that. And that went away. And even, you know, if I came back on the comedy scene, it would be brand new people who had never heard of me. And I just thought like, and sometimes your credits go away. Like if you've been on a show and that show doesn't exist anymore, right. it's not it's helpful irrelevant. to use it as a, yeah, yep. as a it, credit. It ages you. It shows it can, you haven't yeah, worked some, in a while. Whatever it is. Yeah. So I just, everything you can think of that was depressing somebody in entertainment would be that, except for maybe like having a mugshot with, you know, a scandal attached to it. Be great for it. your career, though. <laughs> well, that's the problem. Oh, here's where I'm at now. This is, the, this, is the, <laughs> this is the problem now is that we're, I feel like I could say this generally for both of us right now, mm -hmm. and you've stopped me if I'm wrong, but for this period of time, we've been trying to do it the way it, we were told or we saw it was supposed to be done. Oh, right, yeah. You know, like Abby, point. it was a clean comedian, mm -hmm. was funny, uh, had a great look. Like, she had all those things, and she got she got something she was able right. to quit and I, she's one of the last people i remember th seeing at work for that moment right where oh it does happen you can just start working and now you're looking at it and you're going well how many more gigs do i lose to someone who did something shameful and got a lot of attention for it and now I'm, they're celebrated by getting tickets sold like there are people doing purposeful dumb shit like to the, get the views the hawk to a girl I mean, but she's just doing an interview. It's like I can't. I, don't I can't. Tabs on those people. Well, but, but that's what I mean. Though, but we're she talking like sign, dude. she can get booked at any comedy club in the nation right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe not the seller. No. Yeah. But but they, she yeah, makes yeah. one call or people yeah. to somewhere that needs tickets sold. She takes my weekend, and I can't. <laughs> you know, like so you got to go into business for yourself now. Like I'm much more into that self proprietor thing than I used to be when I was doing stand up. That's great. Yeah, you need to be more. That's it. It's Jessica my business, and that's it. There's no other business to be had. Yeah, Jessica Kirsten. I took a stand up class of hers. Really, I was just picking her brain mm -hmm. in the early years. And one thing she said was, "You really have to be your biggest fan because." Even if other people seem like they are and want to help you out, there's a limit it's a on business. that. But it's, yeah. it's limitless if you're the one doing it. If you're yeah. always showing That's up and advice. always saying That's like, great. yeah, you should be on TV. You're yeah, the one who should yeah. say that to you isn't someone outside of you. It's you. <laughs> yeah. You should be on TV. Yeah, you're right. But you it, should. What, and you keep showing up. It, has it faded for you, though? The, I don't look at it as sought after as I used to being on TV. I want it still. I, I want it. I want I, with like an opportunity to do great work. Mm -hmm. But now you're looking at, I look at fame in such a different way now. It looks time consuming. It looks s foolish. It doesn't look See, fun that's anymore. For it, me, I, you mm -hmm. know, because I've been an editor, I've edited TV commercials for a long time now, and I've never wanted to be an actor. I've always just wanted to be a killer stand up comedian. Yeah. Like to me, like the whole, and now I'm learning that, like, yeah, but they kind of mm -hmm. can feed each other yeah. and this and that. And I'm like, oh, okay, so maybe we'll start doing sketches or something. Like, but, yeah. like the, <laughs> but to me, like, I've never, I was always perplexed by, like, comics that wanted to be actors. Like, I never understood it. Because for me, like, I would see, I, you know, I'd watch dailies. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I would go through it. I go, this looks fucking miserable, man. <laughs> <laughs> thank God. I, long day. Thank God for acting. That's yeah. the only thing. Like, yeah. it's making more money now for me than, than Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But if you can do it, but I just want to make yeah. money. That's that's the only rule now for I'm me. I'm just saying, like, my... my no, 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 yeah, my yeah. The whole thing was so narrow, yeah. and now I've become, like, I, you know, opened up to, like, oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the I cascade see. is bigger. Yeah, exactly, right. Because it has to You could be funny... Mm -hmm. It just, it doesn't have to be this pure, like I had like this yeah, fucking, you know. You're precious like, about it. But yeah, like a Charles Bukowski, like, <laughs> dude, I want to be like a de degenerate, yeah, like yeah, dirtbag, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? No. Like, no. I, I want to yeah. I I I make money. <laughs> I can't right. come home, look my wife in the eyes and go like, hey, I'm so respected. Here are these drink tickets. You should have heard how much they respected my set tonight. I had the comics coming in from the back. <laughs> But here are the drink tickets. <laughs> Great Let little Junior eat with those, hon. <laughs> Get you well vodka and some orange juice. <laughs> Something for everyone here. I had them separated, so I brought them back in a to-go cup. Okay, I think you might have the greatest... Uh, I always do this question with everybody. Mm -hmm. What is your highest, highest, highest entertainment moment while having the day job and you had to go back to it after that moment? 
<laughs> off camera. I'm going to let you tell it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so good. Don't say the company, no, but no, no. it's so good. Go ahead. No, I was, I was gun. I was auditioning daily during my lunch break. Not daily. I was auditioning during my lunch breaks at our day job yeah. um, for commercials. And I finally booked a commercial for the company we worked for. And we're talking about a massive, it's like a big time commercial. And I was like the hero of the shot. <laughs> I didn't have any lines either, which I kind of love. It was those. national, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a voiceover. Someone else is like, this is what you need to do to live your life. And I'm just like living my life. And um, it was great. But. Um, <laughs> so, oh, 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 oh. So, well, hold on, hold on. Let's set, the, let's yeah, set yeah, it up. Yeah, let's yeah. set it up. Let's set it up. Here's I, what we do every day. Mm -hmm. Just so you know what she's talking about. You come, this is now it's a much to me. It's a much more. Uh, open environment for me there mm -hmm. it did not feel that way during that era for me it was very mm -hmm. stifling mm -hmm. uh you come in it's like rat race new york like mm -hmm. working girl style it's before they built a lot of the infrastructure down there so you even no matter what the weather is you're outside yeah. walking <laughs> over a highway right. in your heels to get to this like everyone's squeezing through two doors mm -hmm. it is the equivalent of the office New York City rat race. Yeah, yeah. Right. You're having to go to use different bathrooms, different floors that's so packed and people are in there taking 20 minute dumps. I mean, this is the place where you're like, <laughs> every, and you're you're out till 2 a.m. doing spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're mm -hmm. dead tired at and, night. And you're going in there and people the are morning, treating you like, like shit. It was yeah. before they had all those like, this is how you should be treating people. Like all oh, these courtesy yeah, seminars. Yeah, yeah. All of that. That's, that was out the window yeah, then. That's it was just so like, new. did yeah. you do this? Are you like micromanaged? Yeah, yeah. Overworked? Like all that stuff was happening. Yeah. She goes and she's rushing out and back and forth trying to get back to her desk before one of her leaders goes, where were you mm -hmm. to book this audition? Mm -hmm. And she fucking books it. So <laughs> le leading up to that, I thought, man, if I could just be in this commercial for this company, like it was some kind of random, like that, what, wouldn't that be funny? Because like then they they'd have you, to respect they'd be like, me. Holy, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's her. Yeah. We got we to gotta remember 304 her That's 304A cubicle. That's her. <laughs> we have to remember her name now. We have to not talk down to her when we talk about comedy you know like she's somebody <laughs> and so i booked it and it and it it takes a while for something to air after you book it but it aired and nobody recognized me from it like nobody was like i had to tell them i was like you know i did a commercial for our company and they're like really oh okay <laughs> and it's not that it didn't air it aired nationally but it wasn't it just didn't register as like that's somebody they know. What, after it and maybe aired. I dressed differently in the commercial than I did in the cubicle. Oh, yeah, you wear the same thing every day. I wore my hair back in a ponytail, no makeup, but in the commercial, my hair is down. I have a cool outfit. You just came in that outfit, too. Yeah. <laughs> everybody's cubicle. I should, yeah, stand next to the poster. <laughs> so after it aired, well, how many days until you were back in the office? It was like the next morning? Yeah, the next day. It was a how weekday. Did it it was a weekday shoot. To walk back in that office after the commercial aired. I thought, oh, I have a good paycheck coming from yesterday's yeah. shoot. And I'm, I, I kept thinking once they see this, I'm going to be, yeah. they're going to look at me differently and treat me differently. Yeah. And nobody treated me poorly except maybe the oh. boss that kept <laughs> asking me to get his dry cleaning for him. I was like, oh, yeah. Is this in the job description? But, um, but even he was respectful. <laughs> it's just this matter of I don't get to be my true self here. And nobody gets to, you know, yes. enjoy my gifts. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, it aired. And it, of the people who noticed it, it was like, oh, Nice. Yeah. That's all. That's all. It, it just, they don't care. They don't watch Nobody TV. Cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. You know what? That's kind of a gift to know that after you get over the sting of reality. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That nobody cares. Like, well, you have to do something so grandiose. And in today's yeah. day and age with the social media, how it overturns the news every so fast. 10 hours, mm -hmm. you're, you want to talk about yesterday's news. You're 10 hours ago news. Yeah. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. You Unless you're really massive. To you have to be you. massive for people to care. And what does that care mean? It's, a, it's an endless it mean void. Anything. It's an endless void. And what am I chasing yeah, here? Yeah, you're chasing a, right. a dream right yeah, there. Right. You have to validate yourself. Yeah. You can't. And that was that was the silver lining I said of all this. Like the bitterness was inner peace. It's like, yes. oh yeah, this can't fill me up. The career isn't my identity. I didn't know that until, you know, pandemic right? time. I was like, oh, I have to be someone else now. And you can't I have to find out who I really am. Any of it but your prep. Yeah. And your work. Yeah. Ethic. Yeah. Because you have, I mean, you're a success because you had all the things and you did it the way that, you know, like, in my opinion, is the way it has to be done. It's just the luck of those things making it into a, a how many people do we know? Like we actually know in our business that are working year around it. There's like 10 people. 
Yeah, and well, they, they guarantee they, they know they're going to have a full calendar. What I've noticed for happen for our peers a lot through the decades. Decades is uh, I was going to say the decades I've done it, but yeah, pretty much the decades. Like every five years, they will just disappear from yep. the scene, mm-hmm. and they're in another stratosphere now. Like yeah, if they, they get right. picked up by the machine, so yeah. you're seeing them everywhere, or you're seeing them on TV, yeah. or they are only associating with certain people. And if you if you ever notice like someone's on the same TV show, it. Turns out they probably have the same management. Same rep. Yep. Yeah. So uh, game show uh, or yeah. well, that's what I mean. You got to get into show. like you said into the machine because yeah. the, there's like five agencies feeding every show. Yeah, and I'm I'm not mad at them. And there are still ways to get you know Alex Edelman did his Broadway show yeah. and went from stand up to off Broadway to Broadway and he's a part of you know that world now. Yeah. And there's other ways to do it that aren't just I'm a shiny twenty year old and I'm <laughs> too cool for text. school and the people <laughs> too it's cool so for funny school. You bring up Alex so Edelman because uh, I meant to text you something. <laughs> For some reason, it takes Alex Edelman. Oh, wow. Oh, that's right. It's like, hey, my bad, man. As long as it wasn't about Alex. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I, it was something about the, the podcast. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, 3 yeah. p.m. works. <laughs> like, he needed hey, to get back to me. Hey, like, you have the fucking, Zoom charger. You're not in the machine. <laughs> get the fuck out of my phone. I mean, congratulations on all your, your success. <laughs> P.S. Congrats. 3 p.m. still works. <laughs> Hey, do you have the SD card? <laughs> Can't find the SD card. We're out of sour cream. Congrats Can you on pick the some Emmy. up on your way over? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, there's and, and it's not. I don't really feel jealous for anybody that has something that I want because I wouldn't want anyone to be jealous of me. It's more of you just. I think I get sad that like you really don't have control over it, and then I feel. Uh, what's that word convicted or like icky when I realize like oh yeah I'm not you doing s- what I need to be doing mm-hmm. to be proud of myself yeah it's less about them it's more about like what am I I think that's what comes doing. down to like a, there's a I lot was, you sacrifice when you live in that world of other people's opinion 100% you sacrifice and then when you like waken up when, once you're awoken to that I don't I probably didn't use that right but once <laughs> you have figured that out mm-hmm. you realize what you've wasted <laughs> over years <laughs> once you have spending been- your t- energy on what you had had been awoken <laughs> <laughs> and then what had happened <laughs> what you had had the been future awoken of irregardless of being Junkton. woke <laughs> the, uh, but dude I was just thinking about today like honestly oh, I just want to do jokes that I like you know what I mean that I'm proud of like that's really like the material that I want to be doing because I was going over like my my you know trying to get that hour down and yeah. i was like i just want to do the stuff that i want like i was like oh but the audience is like this i'm like who fucking cares yeah i'll f- you know i'll find I have, the audience i have a question for you ed when i did your show um that was my first time meeting you and my first time doing your show and mm-hmm. i was super excited to be there and do it and mm-hmm. then i got deflated and i'll tell you the moment it happened was i was supposed to transition my camera over from yours like take yours out put mine up oh right and just like answering the phone at control oops i wasn't supposed to say the bra at bob <laughs> Sources. I hope that company does not exist. <laughs> I don't think they're going to get it from that. At Bob Services. It's Bob Sorry. Service. I was Bob just Services. about to correct you. I, I was like, it's, you're like that old lady sitting next wow. to her. Like, I just finished my crossword. And I'm like, God damn it, Abby. You actually Bob have the same. Services. If, if she, you're like the male version of the woman she yeah. described. So, so anyway, not that anybody in the audience may have been able to see it, but my confidence got sapped when I couldn't get on stage in the time I was supposed to because he was like oh, vamping. You were vamping yeah, and like right, helping right, me get right. on stage. I forgot about that. I finally that. got the camera up because I wanted to record my set and it, what a set to record. I think I just was like came like a deflated balloon. Like, what do you guys oh, want? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry so about I that. Bring, I forgot about that. It wasn't you at that. all. It was just my, it was whatever. You can get spooked by anything. Someone can cough. Someone can be wearing a shirt and you're like, uh-huh. why does he have that kind of shirt on? <laughs> Does he not get me? And so... Anyway, I don't know what your impression of me was I like. I have no idea. This neurotic. It's so funny. I know. I'm yeah, right. So this is what happened. No, he's so much better. I'm kind of. Uh, like it was tear. a rough crowd too. I think. Did you feel right? like it was? I think it was a rough crowd. I and heard I, a black man with a British accent. I was like, I'm gonna call him Bridgerton. It's gonna kill. And <laughs> then my ba ba ba, and then bada bum boom, and then out. And no, and I did that, and he was just like, what? And I was like, never mind. Uh, but I remember. Uh, yeah, we, I guess we hadn't talked about swapping out the phones. Did we talk about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. You were like, hey, you can use my tripod if you want. And I was like, sure. And what I should have done is not taken you up on it once I saw, oh, I can't really, I don't know how to work this thing. That's what you what are witnessing now, oh, ladies and gentlemen, in the audience is what Ed and I do on an eight hour drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Ed obsessing Me over sure. I'm like trying to remember this whole thing. It was not you at all. So this Ed. is what happened. I, so I saw Abby go to the camera and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Go to the, like, to swap the phones. And I was like, okay, cool. And, you know, 
I know it'll take about 30 seconds. Yeah. I kind of do it a little bit. And then I just see this <laughs> frazzled. <laughs> and someone like. Elbows. Run, somebody run over and like help her. And like her. Like, so She's it's all. a damsel in distress. It's all like silent to me, right? So I'm yeah, just seeing. I'm and not then I just, conveying it to you. And I, and I see her like. It's like <laughs> throwing her hat down. I kicked it. It's like, like, sort of. <laughs> People are like, I'm throwing yeah, her hat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm kicking and dust. It's like silently yelling at the person trying to help her, and then like she goes back to it, and I'm like still like vamping, and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna say her name now. It was so funny. You were being funny. It was it was fine, and maybe the audience. That's the thing when when you're an unknown entity, and I do like being unknown sometimes. When you bomb. Nobody remembers. Nobody yeah. like nobody. It doesn't register. It's more they're indifferent to you, and so. But I was trying to make an impression with you because I wanted you to have me back on. <laughs> As huge as that sounds, and I just thought, like, what a dork! <laughs> I, I thought it was. Sucks. I thought it was fun. Yeah. I didn't, uh, good. Yeah, it, I well, had some jokes. I liked when I watched the footage after the fact. I was like, okay, this doesn't look as bad as it felt, but it just sometimes it feels so bad in your well, head. Well, you went first like, too. That's sometimes. Uh, and I guess me dragging my toe. I brought. How about the time, Josh? I brought you up because um, somebody was late. And I was like, oh, they were like walking from the subway and I'm dra uh -huh. I'm like stalling for that person because they need to go up as soon as they get there. I'm like, oh, I'm stalling. And then they're not there. And I go, fine, I'll just bring up Josh Accardo. Everybody. Josh comes up. <laughs> was he what ready? What the was that? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of intro was that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is like he just he just uh, uh, talked about a whole other act and then just brought me up. <laughs> he goes Washington Heights. We're supposed That's to a be great friends. way to introduce. <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to be pals. Oh my great. Gosh. So great. anyway, yeah, like it's not all it's not all uh, confidence all the time and everything's going great. <laughs> oh, I can't man. wait though till I'm like out of this hole of like. Feeling like I'm still in whatever the pandemic did to me, like oh, really? ruin my your sense of mojo and your my mojo. Of... I don't feel like I have oh, my mojo wow. back yet. I'm getting it back. Oh wow! But it's like before you get your mojo, you have to like get your mental health in order. It's like oh okay, yeah, you gotta reset a whole lot. Then you have to change your diet. Oh yeah. okay, you know it's like all these it little all things you don't want to do. Yeah, yeah, it really yeah. Does. Then you have to get sleep. Oh, that sucks. So it's all I hope good. It comes back. I'm still You're working. Great. I mean, I I'm actually, still like I showing up. I feel like I found my mojo by like just. The disheveledness of like what the uh, pandemic I, did to me, like just I, I used to wear like a button up shirt. I used to try and be like uh, the dad next door kind of thing. And I'm like, it's not who well, really who better. I am. Yeah, but, yeah. but also you know like you're you in a big self. He just hit your 10 and yeah, stand yeah. up. Right. So you're in a big that was like a big self discovery. Five to 10, ten years. No, it's not. Ten. Is it eight? Yeah, that's something like that. Well, that's what I mean. That's a big discovery. I totally understand what you're talking about. The pandemic really killed momentum for me. Mm -hmm. I had a lot, a lot of things moving. You had a one guy show. You were the, well, actually before that. You had a solo show before the album recording. You had a solo show. I got to see in a theater, yeah. and I, I was longing to do one of those. So I was yeah. like, yeah, really impressed by your drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was like, a, it was just a workshop, so it wasn't anything crazy. But I got a number of people to come see it, which was fun. But I, I really just doing that is huge. A lot, like I haven't done anything like that since the pandemic because now I realized, oh, I got to focus on the maintaining the work life <sighs> yeah balance. building blocks but it's okay to have priorities but right? also the stand-up part like i'm i'm not working with an agency with my stand-up now i'm trying to do it myself so mm -hmm. i've been booking my own tour mm -hmm. cool and that's merch we got that merch yeah oh dude the merch wow. has been probably the biggest success so far <laughs> that's great merch? i'm excited about the merch i sold more t-shirts <laughs> per person that's attended shows that's great and i love t-shirts like, per capita, the, per shows, capita. The, the shirts per capita is high there were it's four a high people in the crowd i don't want to give you any other numbers than just a high per capita it's a great product. <laughs> <laughs> i just gotta get on the road to sell these shirts it's like porn stars we don't shoot the porn for money that's just to keep it relevant baby <laughs> I, I'm, here, I'm a shirt t i'm a t-shirt salesman now the t-shirt salesman so abby what what's going on like what's the new stuff what like what's the game plan we were well my husband and i were doing a podcast we did we started in 2022 it looks like and we did it for about a year we had two seasons out of it but it was just and it's not like we'll never do it again but we did decide to put it on the shelf because it was not 
growing an audience. And then I found out after we decided, we had the big long talk of like, you know what? We didn't meet our goals and that's okay. We tried it. We'll try something else another time. And then I find out like even successful podcasts are dipping in numbers because of Apple and algorithms and who wants to pay whom. So it's almost like we bowed out at exactly the time a lot of people did. Yeah. Um, Only we were not listened to at all. (laughs) No one knew that we made the podcast. (laughs) Um, No, we had some friends and family that were like, we're looking forward to it next week. Tell us when you're, you know, we can't wait to hear. And so the four people that faithfully would always tell me, one of whom was your best friend, (laughs) was, was enough to encourage so me. Supportive, it was guy. great. I don't and know where he finds didn't... the time to listen to everyone's podcast. I don't know. He does. He, he does, does it. He records that stuff yeah, in his mind too. He really He'll play does. it back to you later. <laughs> it's fun. But yeah, so it wasn't like we were disappointed in it. I was actually very proud of it. And even just recently when Luke was making me laugh in the kitchen, I was like, oh man, this is the kind of thing I would like to bring to the podcast. Yeah. But just knowing that every t- it felt like you gave it, it two like years though right trudging yeah i was like dreading it do. i was trudging my feet yeah. to get to it and That's i wanted it to be excited about it yeah, you know? yeah, yeah yeah right but two years is i him and two i years. when we started this two years long we were time. like yeah. we're we're approaching a year coming we up we just here. hit a year we just hit a year this is uh and it's been 56 great yeah but we said we'll give it a year if we don't like doing it then we yeah. we'll stop right because mm-hmm. i already had that one podcast for four years and i had a lot of listeners but it wasn't making me any money. It wasn't serving the tour. Yeah, yeah. I needed to do something that actually served the brand, which mm-hmm. was like, I'm trying to sell tickets. I'm sorry, I just want to sell 40 tickets in each city. Yeah. yeah. I just get a little. I just want a little piece. I love yeah. that specific goal, and I do believe you'll get there. I but think I'm you can't there. get there by sticking with the thing that isn't working. No. So you, yeah, you got to reinvent. Yeah, you yeah. Pivoted. But I think two years. I, I don't think you should even worry about that because two years. Yeah. So is let a me speak about it differently. We concluded a successful run <laughs> yeah. of a very fun you did it podcast for two years. together. You right, liked it, it, but whatever. No one didn't yeah. catch on. And so let me think about. Oh, I recently participated in a recording of a parent. What is it called? Parent al- comedy album. So parent oh, jokes. Yeah. Um, uh, West Side Comedy Club has a has a label, and they were they're pitching it to Sirius, I believe, or they have a deal with Sirius. So awesome. hopefully, you'll hear me on your little road trips yeah you'll hear my actual jokes which is huge for me like i haven't recorded an album yet so this is my first album recording or participation in one and i haven't done um mer- i haven't made merch i haven't i've done tours with other people but i haven't done a solo tour or anything like mm-hmm. that so there are a lot of things left like to do to check yeah. off on the yeah, whole bucket list of being sure. a stand-up comic um i do work regularly in the city and i do road gigs with Luke or with friends, you know, when they're in the tri-state area. But since I've been a mom, essentially, I've been gunning for shows that are in New York, that yeah. shoot in New York. That's been my hope is to, like, get on either daytime TV or, you know, any one of these streaming popular shows. I'll be <laughs> I'll be Miss Maisel's black friend in the department <laughs> store. I don't care. Um, but but yeah, that that would be ideal or. I would love to do voiceover for like video games, yeah. Dude, podcasts. Voiceover. I've done voiceover some podcast work. There's going to be a podcast season, I think season three of the novelizers, Andy Richter uh, heads up and it's just really fun podcasts where you take movie scenes and you describe them as if you're reading them in a novel and then a comedian comes on and, and reads. So I did oh, one wow. for Dirty Dancing, Michael Ian Black has read it Sweet. and yeah, cool. hopefully they'll, yeah, I don't think that season has aired yet, but that's really I was cool. really proud of that. Yeah. So um, yeah, there's a lot of fun, random things that, that I'm doing, but nothing huge yet. Yeah. <laughs> My daughter always asks me, uh, are you famous? And I was yeah. like, to you I am. Yeah. How big do I got to be? Yeah. Yeah. On TV. Where, where have you been? <laughs> How big do I have to be in my own house? I was there an old picture on my phone. Wait, wait, wait. I was in a subway poster once here. Look at that. Does that look famous to you? I mean, everything's burnt. I could have met the president 10 years ago or something like that. And my kid would be like, oh, yeah, that guy from 10 years ago you met. What have you done now? I just like uh, like the idea of Abby like playing the, that old commercial <laughs> yeah. Watch for this. her daughter. Hey, yeah. <laughs> it's like a four by three. It's a <laughs> every now and then though. There's kids <laughs> who I <laughs> call triple highlight reel on for my kid. <laughs> Susie knows what a seven step drop is and a fucking cover two. That thing's going right in the old. Uh, I'm gonna pull the VCR out from the closet. <laughs> Do you know, I just emceed. It's already queued up. The tape is in the, tape is in the deck. <laughs> that that need to like feel validated. I just emceed a gala and the gala was to raise money for a, a charter school and the kids were performing and um, they heard someone introduce me and they're like, you've seen her on TV. And this kid behind the scenes before, like after I've done my stuff as the MC, we're packing up our things to leave. And he goes, are you in movies? And I was like, no, but I hope to be someday. And I was like, and you could play the score because he's a little musician. He's a violinist. And he's like, 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, we will be working together. You realize that, right? That's how this industry works. <laughs> she just lied to that stupid I know. Kid. I should be like, yeah, I'm in a Will Smith movie. Yeah, I'm in Bad yeah. Boys 4. Uh, like you ever heard of a little movie called Bad Boys? <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. I'll break your tube. So right. instead, I was like, no, I've done some TV. And then I named like a, a network he's heard yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, Hulu. Right. I've been on Hulu. You need this kid so badly yeah, yeah, to go, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you ever heard of SpongeBob SquarePants? That's my voice. Yeah. <laughs> Out. Meanwhile, this kid's blowing up on TikTok. Yeah, I know. He's, he's playing. Uh, <laughs> That's the devil thing. comes with down to Georgia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Abby, plug where we can find you. Well, you can always find me on Instagram these days or on, gosh, where else am I? Oh, on, on X. Do we give X any time of day? Twitter used I, to be I mean, so. Oh, man, X sure. is pretty great. I really don't use social media like I used to right now. No <laughs> you can't. Google my name. Google Abby Crushfield. Google What's Curly Comedy. That, that may be a story. Curly Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> This is what you do at the day job? No, because I'm... I wonder everyone hates you there. Yeah. It's curly comedy resources. Well, Google me, then First... backend it to MySpace, which redirects you to Geo... Don't, don't click on my YouTube because it's all super old. Uh, my Pinterest is still kind of active, but it's Pinterest. mostly nail polish. You can follow me at Josh Ricardo and go to joshricardo.com for all tour dates. Uh, follow me on uh, Instagram at Comedy. Go to edmcgowan.com to see my city dates and uh, our tour dates. Email us. Oh, yeah, email. Email us. Send us an email if you got any kind of stories about working in an office. <laughs> If you ever shot a commercial for your job yeah. while temping there, and got, you worked and got, at Domino, you and delivered for Domino's respect. and then shot a Domino's. And they were like doing a real driver, like you actually were an actor in the Domino's. <laughs> Please email us. (laughs) Uh, Workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. We'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at workingclassholes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in workingclassholes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.